right, good morning. We're getting fewer and fewer students. Maybe it's related to this fact, I don't know. Yesterday, late, around 9 p.m., I've decided to check on the homework and uh, this is just homework one, part one. There's also part two, part three, part four. We can see some people finished it, but also we can see some fin people didn't even start it. And uh, <clears throat> there is no law which directly relates the time when homework is started and the grade for the exam. But based on my experience, students who start late have a higher risk to get a lower grade. And uh, that's why seven lectures ago I made a suggestion and advice. Yeah. Don't wait until the last day. Start early, do homework every day, little by little, as much as you can. But that's just an advice. I cannot force anybody in doing that, right? <clears throat> it's like taking a cooking class the instructor tells you, use those ingredients for your recipe. But you choose, do you want to use those ingredients or not? Just keep in mind, that's your choice. If you make a choice, you take responsibility for the result. That's a general rule. Also works for solving specific problems in physics in life, and uh, tomorrow, today and tomorrow, we're not going to learn anything new theory-wise, going to more practice, practice makes things better. So tomorrow, I plan on having time for your questions, and uh, probably tomorrow, I'm going to start a new topic which is not related to this exam, but we have to start it anyway, because we have to. So, <clears throat> question. <coughs> A very typical situation. Several resistors connected differently, and uh, the whole circuit is completed. There's a battery, there's electric current. We need to calculate everything we can. But first, we need to make a statement about two resistors, number one and number three. This is a review question. We had a very similar question about the capacitors. Yeah. So we remember that when we have two elements in a circuit, they may be connected in series, they may be connected in parallel, but they may be connected in neither way. So, <clears throat> if we look at the resistors two and three and four, they share the same electrodes. So these three definitely are connected in parallel. And that means a simple uh, thing. Because they all are identical, we can replace all these three with one equivalent, which is equal to one third of any of those. Of course, we can all, always calculate like one over R equivalent should be equal to one over 15 plus one over 15 plus one over 15. But because they are identical and we know the rule, it will be 
same result. And uh, we can redraw the circuit. And these two elements clearly connected in series. But the resistor number one and the resistor number three are not. This is a junction point. When devices connected in series, there should be no junction point. Well, of course, now it's very easy to finish the calculation, right? So, for example, electric current will be equal to 24 divided by 3 plus 5, 8, 3, 3 amps. And now, when we know electric current, that's an additional variable we just have found. Now we can just calculate anything. We just have to write an equation, plug the numbers, take a calculator, calculate. For example, uh, power. Yeah. For the power, let's say, of the resistor number two, what can we use? Well, nothing so far. We only know the resistance, 15. But for the power, we need to know two variables. So, for example, voltage or electric current. What's easier? Well, of course, we can calculate all of them. But what we know is this electric current, which in the circuit is counterclockwise. <coughs> and uh, this electric current splits at the junction I2, I3, I4. How does it split? Evenly. When we have all identical resistors, they should have the same electric current traveling. Can we prove it? Yes, we can because they connect it in parallel. They also have the same voltage across. Same voltage, same resistance means same electric current. And uh, if three amps splits in three equal parts, that means each electric current I2 or I3 or I4 should be equal to one third of three, which is one. So if I know electric current, now I can calculate power I squared times R1 squared times 15. 15 watts, etc., etc., etc. So nothing really special now. Search for the equation, write it down, plug the numbers, take calculator, calculate. But uh, I I've used certain shortcuts. I didn't use actual algebra for calculating the equivalent resistance or the individual current because I know what should happen. Yes? Yes, but there's an easier way. Yes, but there is an easier way. Which one? What do we know about the battery? Voltage. So calculate the total power dissipated by the battery. You can just use the original. 24 times 3. 
which do you choose? Doesn't matter. You know, it's a matter of kind of practicing to see which equation works faster, but they all work equally correct. All right. What do you think about this situation? Again, we have a battery and uh, three different resistors, one with an unknown resistance connected together. And uh, we need to say something about electric current through the <coughs> top <laughs> resistor. <coughs> we have two different approaches. Number one, actually solving, doing algebra, writing equation, and calculating that current, and then look at the number. And we will, but to answer this question, we can use a different approach. We can reason just what is happening with the electric current when it goes through a junction point. So you have to choose your answer. Because I want to switch and see what did you enter? And then I will, I'm going to switch back. All right, so I just want to remind you, two days ago I sent an email with, I think, 1-800 phone number of the web assign. Those people promised me that if anybody has any issue with using web assign, just have to call and they will help you to fix it. That was the question number three. Well, <clears throat> so, first of all, we have to make a statement about the current approaching the junction point. So this electric current, I, is equal to what? Someone from the back. What is the number? What is the value of electric current approaching the junction point? Five. Well, you're technically in the middle, but thank you. Five, how do you know? You have eyes, you know numbers, you can read. You see how many functions are involved. Yeah, but then it splits. So it means only a portion of it goes through each. Right? Right. Am I always right? No. <coughs> but I'm pretty confident about this statement. So clearly, when you reason through you see less charge traveling through the second resistor. So the right answer is three. And uh, if you choose five or greater, ask yourself why. <clears throat> That's an important question. It's called the reflection in psychology. Well, now, now, of course, we can just solve this whole thing. Mm -hmm. Well, we know that according to the junction rule, if we add these two currents together, it should get five. What else do we know? Well, we know that 
Anybody? Please tell me what a specific equation can I write down? I'm not looking. I'm listening. It's your time. Cannot hear you. That's not an equation. An equation has to have two parts. Something is equal to something. Equals I. Okay. That's not a specific equation. That's a general equation. When we need to write a specific equation, we have to write it specifically for a specific device, a part of a circuit. So. Uh, so far, that's not, not really helpful. <clears throat> you could write it specifically for a first resistor, for a second resistor, for a third resistor, or for the whole circuit. So you could write four specific equations. And if you're not sure what to do, that's what you have to do. You just have to write four specific equations, one for each specific element. So write it down. If you know what to do, you just do it. <clears throat> this is a difference between a problem and a task. Yeah. If you know what to do, you just do it. It's not a problem, it's a task. The problem is when you have to achieve a goal and you don't know what to do. That's a problem. In that case, you just have to start trying, trying again and again. Because until you solve a problem, you don't know if your approach would be successful. So you have to try and again and again. So, and in this situation, trying means just using this law as many times as you can, Hope, hoping, or I say believing, it will work. If you truly believe, it will work. So for example, uh, how would we write a specific law for the resistor number two, general? Specific. The specific law must have exactly the same structure, so it should have exactly the same variables with a little differences. Yeah? Structure. The fraction bar remains, equals, remains. What should I write for electric current? What should I write? Just I? Hmm? I'm uh, using, I'm writing for the second resistor. Let's call them again. One, two, three. But yeah, I thought it would have been clear. Two ohms, second, three ohms, third. And also they go from left to right. For the, for the second resistor, we don't know the electric current. We cannot write a number. But what do we write? We, can, can we just leave an empty space? No, we can't. So we have to write something. But better if you write a symbol which represents. Can I just write an I? Gentleman in a hat. There's only one, no, two. Oh, no, that's not that lady. Okay. Gentleman in a hat, please tell me, can I just write a letter I? C. 
So uh, you should have said no, because that would answer my question. And then you could say you should write A2 to represent a specific electric current, not just general. Here we should write R2 or the value. What should I write in a numerator? So far, nothing. I have no symbol for this voltage. So now I'm forced into introducing that symbol and then using that symbol. And, uh, well, that's it. That's all we can do for now. Now we can write an equation for the third resistor. And this is what everybody should have written already. Yeah? You know the strategy. Now <coughs> we can write um, Well, let's be as accurate as possible. So delta V1 over, we have to introduce that symbol. R should be equal to 5 amps. Well, what else can we write? For the whole circuit, 16 over R equivalent should be equal to Five amps. <coughs> we could calculate uh, the equivalent resistance. Well, calculate in quotes because we don't know uh, R. Let's write it R1 actually. Let's be consistent. R1. And well, we can write an equation. R equivalent should be equal to R1 plus should be equal to the equivalent resistance of two resistors connected in parallel. So, how do we calculate it? Well, it should be 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3. And in the end, we have to flip it. So, that's going to be the equivalent resistance. If we knew R1, of course, we could... Yes? When you add the currents together, it will be. Hmm? That's a good question. We could do one over R two three as 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3, which is 5 over 6. And that would give us the equivalent resistance for only two resistors, 2, 3, 6 over 5. That's another possible relationship. There is one more relationship, which is very important and saves a lot of time, which is still not on the screen. And everything I've been doing here, I was just stalling to give you time. Because nothing from this is really important. Yes? You could do that, perfect uh, approach. There is also still one important statement, which, if I made it, would save a lot of time. And that is not mathematical statement. That's a physical statement about a specific type of a wiring about a specific type of connection we have. Yes. Absolutely. When we have two elements or more connected in parallel, they share, they have the same voltage across. So that's the same thing. 
So if we use this approach, we can calculate electric current faster because on one hand, I2 plus I3 equals 5. On another hand, because of this relationship, the voltage is the same, hence 2 times I2 should be equal to 3 times I3. <clears throat> so the current split, and naturally, the resistor with a lower resistance has higher current through it, yeah. because electrons are smart. Why would they go through the harder path if they can go through the easier path? So what two numbers can you suggest? On one hand, if you add them up, you get five. On another hand, if you multiply that number on two and another number on three, you get the same number, the same result. Anybody, please? Yes. Two and three, which is which? So this electric current, I2, should be equal to 3 amp. And this electric current, I3, should be equal to 2 amps. Technically, what we've done, we have solved a system, two equations, two unknowns, two equations. The equation number one and the equation number two. We could have done it algebraically, of course. Solve one equation for one variable, plug it into first equation, solve it, etc., etc. But with these numbers, the answer is simple, two and three. And, uh, well, we also could do that. And now we can calculate anything else, anything else. For example, voltage number two, which is equal to the voltage number three, should be equal to six. Two times three, that's the voltage, six, six volts. Which means if we take the whole voltage, 16, and we subtract six, it gives the voltage left across the first resistor, 10. And uh, if we know voltage, 10, and current, 5, the resistance will be 2. Right? So we always have more, more paths more approaches to solve a problem like that than we need. And you should try all of them, just see which makes you feel more confident. All right, so a more complicated circuit just to, uh, to demonstrate a general approach. Now we have five elements, one active, four passive, and uh, First, we need a strategy, and the strategy is we have to make a step-by-step -step transition from the original complicated circuit to a circuit which has only one battery and one resistor. Our total or our equivalent, same things. How do we make these transitions step by step? So we're looking at uh, the circuit and we're searching for elements connected either in series or in parallel, for sure. And we can see these two connected in series. So we can replace, that's a step number one. Every time we make a step, we change something. We have to redraw the circuit, we have to draw a new one. Now, we only have three passive elements left. One ten, one eighty. These elements haven't been even touched, so they remain the same. And this should be equal to four seventy. So we start searching again, and we're looking at the circuit, and we see another. 
uh, <coughs> elements which now connected in parallel, which means now we can replace these two with only one. Mm. The resistance of this resistor should be equal to 1 over 180 plus 1 over 470, and we have to also flip it. So this is the resistance. And now we can make the final transition. And the final transition tells us the equivalent resistance, total resistance of the whole circuit should be equal to 110 plus, well, whatever it is, 1 over 180 plus 1 over 470. If you're quick with calculating numbers on your calculator, that's it. That's your number. And of course, now you have to go backwards step by step and calculating everything you can. Because now, for each element, you know at least two different variables. And when you know two variables, you can always calculate the third one, whichever it is. If you know voltage and resistance, you can calculate the current. But the same electric current I, which travels in the last most simplified circuit, will be traveling in the previous circuit. This is the current which travels through the battery. That current splits at the junction point. So we can call it I2 and I3, for example. <clears throat> but again, for each element, when you know two variables, you can calculate the third, and you should be able to see it. For example, here, because electric current has been found before, and because you know the resistance of any resistor, 110 or another one, you can calculate the voltage across each of these resistors. Delta V, let's call it 1. And the same voltage, of course, the same resistor has in the previous circuit. And if you know voltage number 1, you can calculate voltage number 2, which is the same in both circuits. So you should try to practice in seeing connections without using any equations because that saves time. And in, the, in this particular situation, I've got all the numbers, so you can practice at home, and then you can check your calculations with these calculations. Question. What do we think? So we've got two circuits, number one, number two, or we call them A and B. In one circuit, we have a battery and a bulb, nothing else. You know what? I'm not sure how old is this one. We need a very fresh battery. Oops. Too fresh. hasn't been used yet. Amazon, the source of the batteries. I wish they would pay me for that. Come on. All right, so let's see. Does it work? Yes. 
So, and I will have to attach a second bulb. See if it works, yes. To attach a second bulb to the first one, I need two wires. And uh, you have to tell me what do you expect would happen with the brightness. So all I have to just connect it. All I have to do is just connect it. And let's record it for the ages. Bless you. Well, of course, we can reason, not just guess. Or probably just easier to look at. So uh, this bulb experiences voltage of 9 volts and that's why this this bright and uh, when we connect the second bulb in parallel which is identical to the first same resistance what will be the voltage across that bulb well in parallel that means it's going to be 9 again same resistance same voltage what does it mean? What does it mean? Don't move to the right. Same resistance, same voltage. What does it mean? Same brightness. Same. Same. Of course, uh, it does work perfectly when the battery is absolutely fresh because over time the battery loses its property and the internal internal resistance might change the effect a little bit just give me a second so first of all you saw it same and if you thought differently that means you are wrong question is why you tell me it's a circuit See, <laughs> probably people over there couldn't hear you, so I repeat, the current is cut in half. This statement, I'm sorry, in this particular version of it, doesn't make any sense. Because again, you are too general. Which current? We have a current number one here. We have a current number two here. We have a current number three, number four. These two situations, two simple circuits, you can talk about four different currents. If you just say a current, that doesn't make any difference, you know, doesn't make any sense. You have to be more specific. That's the problem with solving problems. You have to be as specific as possible for every question and for every step. Yes. Again, the biggest mistake you're doing right now is thinking. Don't think. Do. You want to solve it, solve it. Pick a number. Because all bulbs are identical, call them 10 ohms. 10. Good, well, yeah, 10. 10 is a good number. 10. 10. 10. Calculate all four electric currents which possible I1, I2, I3, I4, just do it. You can do it, so you do it. If you can't do it, ask what information is missing, what law is missing, or what definition is missing in your reasoning. So, all right, electric current number one. 
14 over 10, 1.4. Please now calculate and tell me the value for electric current number three. Hmm? Anybody, please. It's a general question. You should just calculate electric current number three and tell me a number. Electric current number three. That is electric current which was traveling and is traveling right now when I connect it through another bulb. Okay? So you've got a battery. Well, that battery is 14 volt. This is how the circuit works. Battery, one bulb, second bulb, nine volt, 10 ohms. So please tell me the electric current number three is equal to, how did you find it? So, you see, you just said the magic word, equivalent. Equivalent means you have replaced two actual bulbs with one element. What is the resistance of this single element? What number? Anybody? Who are faster? Hmm? This is connection in parallel by connecting resistors in parallel. What is happening to the resistance decreases. So it will be a half, 10 over two identical bulbs, five ohms. So now, now the electric current, which you calculating as 14, over five, which is 2.8, is equal to, which is electric current? I1, I2, I3, or I4? I2, that's the one which travels through the battery in both circuit, in the original and the, in the equivalent. This is the current number two, which <coughs> splits. How does it split? Equal resistance, resistances equal currents. So I3 will be equal to a half of I2, which is 1.4. I4 will be equal to a half of I2, which is 1.4. And of course, we could have used the Ohm's law, right? Because a current is equal to voltage over the resistance, but because they connected in parallel, the voltage is 14, and uh, the resistance is 10. So we have the same number, which makes everything consistent, which is a good thing. So what happened is when we have added a second bulb in parallel to the first, we decreased the total resistance in half, which means we increased the current drawn from the battery by two. But that current, which doubled here, again split here in half. So each bulb still has exactly the same current as before, which is equally bright, not just to each other, to the case before. So, what should you take from this? Number one, don't think. Number two, be specific. All right. Okay, I just solved it. <clears throat> Next question. It's a very similar situation. But instead of a second bulb, I will be 
adding just a wire. So I have a battery connected to a bulb. It is on. It is on. So in my previous experiment, I used a second bulb. Yeah. And that's how it worked again. Now I re remove, remove the bulb. I, I'm going to just use the wires directly. So <clears throat> what is your expectation about what's going to happen? All right, uh, if you think the bulb explodes, please raise your hand. Okay, that's a good sign. <clears throat> what do you think? All right, now we can check your prediction. So you were wrong, which is a good thing. So you have two devices connected in parallel. One has a resistance, second has zero resistance. Electrons, remember, smart. Why would they go through the resistance if they can go through where there is no resistance at all? So they all go through the wire. No electrons go through the bulb anymore. That's it. And uh, technically, what you have to do is draw a circuit with the bulb and a resistor which has zero resistance, and calculate <coughs> Okay, that's the answer. And uh, uh, that's not the only possible situation, that the simplest one, yeah, we may have more elements together as long as there is a wire presented with, which has no resistance. This doesn't act like a junction anymore. This element doesn't matter anymore. All electrons, all charges will travel through the wire. So if I close this switch, <coughs> what happens? Well, actually, I can make it work. So first, we have two bulbs connected in series which means they will be equally bright, but dimmer if only one bulb would have been connected. Because when two, see, one, two. Total resistance is higher, current is lower. Now what I'm doing is using this wire across one bulb. So what's going to happen? What's going to happen to total resistance? This bulb will not matter anymore. Only one bulb uh, provides the resistance. So the total resistance from this case goes down. Goes down, current goes up. It's brighter. But now there is no current through this bulb. It goes around it through a wire. This case. In this case, of course, we shortened the whole circuit. So when we shortened the whole circuit, which is not good for the battery, but no current now travels through the bulbs. It goes through the wire. And uh, yeah. if you shorten <coughs> the battery, eventually, it's going to be ruined. It's getting hotter. 
Well, next situation. So that's not a question. We just had this example actually working, built in. We just need to redraw the circuit. When the switch is open, there is no current through bulb C. So all we have is two bulbs, one, two, and that's it. So what's happening to voltage? Well, if we have identical bulbs, identical, resi identical resistors, the voltage should split evenly 60 volts. 60 volts. Can we prove it? No, well, of course we can. Because the voltage should be equal to a current times the resistance. And if the current is the same because of the type of the wiring, and the resistance is the same because we're told so, the product will be the same. So it should be two numbers equal to each other. And if we add them, we should get 120. So, and uh, equally bright. Now, this is a new experiment with three bulbs now. What do you think is going to happen to the brightness of this bulb if we close the switch? So I'm going to give you time to think about it. Uh, this is a rare situation when you need to think. So <clears throat> two bulbs connecting the battery. I need the third one. I want it connect. So this is the bulb A, B and C. C, for now, is disconnected. I need one more wire. As soon as I close the switch or connect this wire, that should or should not, depending on your reasoning, affect the total, total resistance of the circuit. What should happen to the total resistance? If total resistance doesn't change, current doesn't change, brightness doesn't change. If total resistance increases, current decreases, brightness decreases. If total resistance decreases, current increases, brightness increases. That's the way of reasoning. Or you can just memorize this and don't think anymore. <clears throat> so. By adding an extra element in parallel, how does it affect the resistance of these two elements? What do you think? It should change, yes. Goes down because we're given more room for electrons to travel. If the resistance of this part of a circuit decreases, how does it affect the whole resistance? Also decreases. If total resistance decreases, electric current through this bulb increases, it should be brighter. See? Hundreds of years ago, that would have been magic. Right? You know, people with batteries and bulbs could have been making lots of money. Now, just physics again. See? Now, what happened to these bulbs? Well, look at this one. It was bright, now it's dimmer. Why? Well, even the total current increased, but it wasn't doubled. So it splits here, and the current through bulb B, now it's lower than it was before. 
And of course, we can prove it mathematically. We just have to apply the law, right? Or left. So, <coughs> well, we made a change. The rule is, if the change has been made, what do we do? We redraw the circuit. That's it. Now, initially, we had, well, let's call it current number one, same as two current number one, same current traveling clockwise. And that current was equal to 120 volts divided by, well, R plus R. <coughs> when we need to compare something before and after, we actually could pick a convenient number. We believe the actual value doesn't affect the result, so we can pick R equals 10, for example, and work with that, or just keep R, but in that case, we have to do some algebra. Now, that's a current number one. Current number two, which splits here, should be equal to what? Well, it should be equal to 120 divided by the new total resistance, which should be equal to R plus a half of R. Which is what? Which is 2 and 2, 2, 40 over 3 R. So if you want, if you just want to compare, just use a common denominator times 3, 360 over 3 R. <coughs> Clearly, first current is higher. Yeah. But the current number three and the current number four, I3, I4, they should be equal to one. What did I do? 360. It should be higher. Why is it lower? Ah, it's R plus R, 2R. So times 2, 360 over 6R, which is, again, going back to 3, 180 over 3R. <coughs> and that should be equal to 1 half of I2, which is wherever it is, uh, 120 over 3R. So algebra or a specific number. And uh, well, don't answer this question. We just have it solved, actually. So scratch it. And uh, electric current in bulb B should be, of course, is the same as in bulb C because they have the same resistance. So IB is equal to IC because in both situations we would have to calculate current as resistance times voltage. But for devices, resistors connected in parallel, the voltage is the same. Same voltage, same resistance, same current, same power, same brightness. Uh, okay, we just did this. So, <clears throat> ah, that's what I didn't do. Let's do it quickly. We've been talking about voltage, 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 voltage. What about electric potential? So, <clears throat> Of course, we always set the 
negative electrode of the battery to zero potential. So this says potential is equal to zero volts. Same letter V, different meaning. And electric potential along a wire doesn't change. So it's zero up to this point. Let's call it VB, that matter, still zero volts. Then it changes. How? The rule is electric potential drops in the direction of electric current or rises opposite to the direction of electric current. So if we have to apply, first we have to say this rule out loud, listen to it, because it involves the word current. It forces us to draw electric current. We need to know a rule for the direction of electric current. Outside of the battery, electric current goes from higher potential to lower potential. So this is the direction of electric current. It splits here, goes back. It splits here, goes back. And electric current returns back to the battery. And inside the battery, electric current travels from a negative terminal to the positive terminal. Well, at least if it's one battery. So now, it means this potential, electric potential Va, should be higher than Vb. Electric current travels from A to B. So Va should be equal to Vb plus the voltage, well, B, plus this voltage. Actually, we didn't calculate the new voltage. We only knew the voltage when two bulbs connected. This is a different situation, so we have to calculate the new voltage. And uh, how do we do that? Well, this bulb has resistance of R, 1R. Those two together can be replaced with one resistor with a half of R resistance. That's what we already said, so we know that. How does it affect the voltage? Delta V1, delta V2, which is also delta Vb, which is also delta Vc. Uh, well, the Ohm's law says voltage equals current times resistance. This is a general law. We can write it twice. For the first bulb, for the second bulb, well, second element. And we can see, because these two elements share electric current. The electric current is the same, only resistance matters. So this voltage should be equal to a half of this voltage. This voltage should be equal a half of that. How do we write it? This voltage, delta V2, also known as delta Vb, delta Vc, should be equal to one half of delta V1. But together, if we add them up, what number do we get? This voltage and this voltage is equal to what number? 120. 120. Yes, that is the number. So, That's the equation number one, and the equation number two is this is not the only possible approach. I just want to show this approach because sometimes it saves time. What two numbers, if you add together, equal to 120, but one should be twice larger than another one? What? Please tell me the answer. 40 and 80. Now, which is which? Is this 40? 
No, it should be twice of that. So 80, 40. And of course, you can do it algebraically. So that should be 80 volts. This voltage should be 40 volts. Those are voltages. But now we can use this number for calculating electric potential at point A. It should be equal to 0 plus 40, 40 volts. Electric potential V A is equal to 40 volts which is consistent with the next voltage. <clears throat> what is voltage? It's a magnitude of potential difference. So potential here is 120. And the voltage should be 80, which is equal to 120 minus 40. Again, everything is consistent. All right, and uh, I have a slide with all these numbers for both, both cases. Moving on. OK. Uh, I want to use this opportunity to talk about an important fact. So this is what I want to do. I want to connect this bulb to the battery. Now I want to use longer wires. Why? You'll see. To connect the second bulb to the first one. What's going to happen? Nothing. We saw it already. So this is not circuit like that. In this picture, the bulb is in the middle, and two, uh, the, the battery is in the middle between the bulbs. So is this circuit different from that circuit? What about now? What about now? Oops, that makes difference. You have to keep everything connected. All right. It's still the same circuit. This is just a picture. The actual physical realization of a circuit could be any, could be many, many different ways to actually build the circuit equivalent to this picture. Which means, actually, we can redraw the picture in any way we like. We just have to keep all the connections the same. For example, I can redraw this circuit, uh, bringing all resistors on the same side, like this. Let's call it A. And I'm moving two other resistors on another side. It's exactly the same circuit if I keep the same values. 40 volts, 40 ohms, 120 ohms, 50 ohms, 50 ohms. We don't have to do that, but sometimes it helps. Well, uh, calculate everything. What can we calculate? Equivalent resistance, every single current, every single potential difference. But we also can calculate potential. That's what I want to do. I want to know potential VA, and I want to know potential VB. And uh, if I know those potentials, if I need, I can calculate potential difference between A and B. Why would I need it? I don't know. just as an, as an example, that we could do that too. Well, um, how do we calculate electric potential? Since we talk about electric potential, we always start from assigning zero to a certain point in the circuit. And normally, that's a negative terminal. 
negative electrode of the battery, which makes electric potential here, 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 all up to here, all, all up to here, all up to here, zero. Now, there is certain voltage, um, let's call them one, two, three, four. So it's going to be one, two, three, four. There is certain voltage, number one, across the first resistor. And the electric potential at point A should be equal to zero plus this voltage. OK, now we know what we need to find out, this voltage. There is a certain voltage, delta V3, across the third resistor. And electric potential at point B should be equal to zero plus delta V3. Technically, I should have draw a current. Or in this situation, the electric current goes through the battery, splits. <clears throat> and uh, well, now we got to start calculating uh, voltages. The good thing about elements connected in parallel, as we saw in the experiment, they do not affect each other. So uh, here, I have two identical resistors connected to the battery. What does it do to the Total voltage of the battery. How does it split? Evenly. So that should be 20 volts. That should be 20 volts. Oops. That's not the right uh, branch. It's 40. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to do 50 and 50 first. Yeah, splits evenly, 50 and 50. So that should be 20 volts, 20 volts, and 50 and 50, that gives me VB. VB. 20 volts. And now, actually, I don't want to fit it inside. I want to keep it outside because I can. It doesn't change the circuit. 40 ohms and 120 ohms. Now the voltage number one is not equal to the voltage number two. However, I can tell you, and you can tell me, the relationship. First of all, if we add them up together, we should get 40. That's a total one. However, delta V2 is across a resistor with a higher resistance, so it should be also higher than delta V1. But that's not only one thing we can say. We can actually say the exact coefficient between these two voltages. There is a number which relates these two voltages. Please tell me that number. Yes? You're asking or you're saying? You're saying. All right. And of course, we should be able to prove it quickly. And how do we prove it? Well, electric current here let's call it I1, is the same for both, right? So delta V1 should be equal to electric current number one times 40. 
but delta V2 should be equal to the same electric current times 120, same electric current. So for example, if you have these equations, you can divide them. Electric current is the same, it's getting canceled, and uh, we get this coefficient three. So now uh, we can ask, what two numbers, if we add them together, will give 40, but one is three times greater than another one? What are those, those two numbers? Anyone? And 10 and 30. If you're not sure, of course, you can solve it algebraically because it's a system. The equation number one, the equation number two. Which is 10, which is 30? This is supposed to be 10 because it's lower. This is supposed to be 30 because it's higher. And that gives us electric potential A, 10. So now that's a VA. Now we can calculate potential difference delta VAB. We can do more because if we have a circuit like that and we have a multimeter, we can actually measure that potential difference. All we have to do is connect one electrode to point A and the second electrode to point B and read the number. And what should we read? 40 minus, uh, 20 minus 10, 10. But of course we can calculate every other thing. We just have to <coughs> use new numbers. If we know the resistance, if we know the voltage for every single resistor, we can calculate the uh, power if you want to. We already have, uh, we, we can uh, calculate electric current, right? So, all right, I did this. Okay. Since we skipped the question number seven, that should be the question number seven round right now, I suppose. I want to ask it. So we have a more and more complicated circuit. Now, this circuit has one, two, three, four, five passive elements, five resistors, and one active element plus a switch. Initially, the switch is opened, and uh, the question is, what will happen to the brightness of the bulb A when we close the switch? <coughs> That's it. I'm going to give you time to reason it through. Choose your answer. One side, we just have two bulbs connected in series, and whatever it is. And on another side, we have Just check. Good. Good. 
Good. So now what do I do? I have to connect this one. The second one. And then and then I have to connect this one in parallel to this one. We had this experiment done before. We had two bulbs and we connected the third one and we saw what was happening. The brightness was changing. But now we talk about another situation. So, let's do the magic. So I'm going to connect and disconnect this bulb again. You should be looking at this bulb. Disconnecting, connecting, disconnecting, connecting, disconnecting, connecting. Do you see any change? No. What change is, where change is happening is here in this circuit, like it was before. Two bulbs equally bright, and then one becomes brighter, second becomes dimmer. But it doesn't affect anything on another side. Why? Same reason. The voltage of the battery is a fixed number. And no matter what I'm doing with this side of a circuit, it doesn't affect the voltage across the second side of the circuit, bless you. So what does it affect? Well, it affects the total resistance. It affects the total current. So the total current will be different. And the current in this part will be different. But the current in this part is fixed by the value of this battery and the resistances of these resistors. So no effect. And by the way, I've got also another version, which I want to do right now. It's not just toys. We can use actual devices. These are bulbs, identical, all 100 watts. And I want to connect first these two in series. So the electric current should travel like this, like this, like this, like this. Yep. Now I will add a third bulb in parallel to the second. The behavior is exactly the same as we saw before. Total resistance drops, so the brightness of this bulb goes up. But here, yeah. equally dim. But if I have another bulb connected to a power outlet, no matter what I'm doing here, will not affect the brightness of that bulb. So exactly like in this situation, exactly like in this question. Every time we should look at the specific connection and this specific connection tells us well first of all we have to redraw the circuit and we do have time for that. Here we only have two bulbs also. The third is not a part of a circuit. That's the first situation, situation number one. And the electric current we want to compare is this one, I, A. 
Situation number two is different. Same battery, two bulbs. Now we have one bulb like this, and now we have two bulbs connected in parallel. But now we have to look at electric current IA. What's happening with other bulbs don't matter. And uh, the electric current through bulb A in both situations is equal to 120 over 2R. 120 over 2R. Electric current through the battery, of course, will be different. Yes? Yeah, and that affects the total current. The current through the battery will be different. This is only the current through the bulb A or another one. But the current through the battery, let's call it A1 and A2, will be different. Let's call it, what did I say, A? I1, I2, IB, IB star. Current number one through the battery equals current through A plus current through B. Current number two in a, s a second circuit through the battery will be equal to current A star plus current B star. Well, these two are the same, but these two are not. They are different. which affects the current through the battery, drawn from the battery by the whole system. And we, we know that uh, the current in a second situation through bulb B will be higher than the current in the first situation through bulb B. But we can analyze those two parts of the circuit independently because they do not affect each other. And that completes our class today. Thank you. So again, tomorrow I'm going to finish some examples and then questions and answers. And then hopefully the new topic.